This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor. Come take my hand, I will walk with you. I won't let go till you say so. There isn't anything I wouldn't do. Want to make sure that you understand. Thank you for joining the Crody Files. I'm Craig Bryson. And I'm Jodie Mears. And together, we, we are, are the, the Crody Files. Episode 4. What does an executive assistant do on the first day? Listen to the end where we hear from one of our listeners sharing her tips. Plus, we shall answer your questions. Welcome to our fourth episode. Thank you for your time. Yeah, a few. And listening and following us, it's really greatly appreciated. And today we are going to discuss the first day at work. Which is always nerve-wracking. It really is. Yeah. You expect so much to happen. And it's not like first day much, at school. <laughs> yeah, not much end up happening. So it's all about onboarding. First day at work, you know, equals onboarding. This can be as much or as little as you need it to be, depending on the company. Again, very subjective, depending on what setting you're going into. You know, small local businesses might not have much of an onboarding process. Be prepared for that. Yeah. Big corporates have a long onboarding process. Some of the onboarding requirements um, that I've been on have been things like, Listening and listening to videos, reading text that can take up to four, five, six hours. Yeah, that's a training. Be prepared to literally start at ground zero. Yeah. But also remember, you know, it's your first day. Don't think you have to remember everything. Just remember the bathrooms are, where the kitchen (laughs) is, and where your desk is, what floor you're on, you know. Yeah. Again, preparation. Preparation. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your laptop? Who do you need to meet to get your laptop? You know, they should have somebody there to guide you and, you know, you shadow that person, wouldn't you? Yes. So our advice in this episode would be more of prompting you as the listener to ask these questions. They might come across really simple, Mm -hmm. but I think in the heat of the moment of your first day, new role, new job, you might have just come from a role that you've been very comfortable at for absolute years, like Mm. I did. And then expect on day one, right, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to set up this spreadsheet. I'm going to look super organized. <laughs> and then you get there and you think, oh, what's my password? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you are a small fish in a big pond where right. you used to be a big fish in a small pond. So it's all back to the beginning. It is. So allow yourself time. Um Get to know the onboarding representative. It could be, again, depending on what kind of company you're going into. It could be HR. It could be... um, Another EA. It could be another EA. Yeah, it could be someone else just working or sitting next to you that just goes through a few bits and bobs. Yeah. And it could be the person you're replacing. Oh, Oh. that's sometimes awkward. (laughs) Yeah. A couple of different experiences there. (laughs) Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Covering maternity leave, handovers. You know, your onboarding might end up being an actual handover. Yeah. Through their notes. I mean, which is good, but don't take it as gospel. No. You're there to make your own mark. Yeah, exactly. And I think you need to sort of adapt and make it your own. That Mm. is one of the key points. Make it your own because you know that you are good at what you do, but you're in a new environment. So you need to know the processes and the platforms. And then once you've got that under your belt then you can start making it your own. But how about we take it back to the beginning then? So the day before you start work, I mean, we're there as administrative professionals, as an assistant. Let's show them how we work, right? So we need to do our preparation. Ask the day, at least, I mean, this is a bare minimum for me, at least the day before you need to ask questions like the name of the person you'll be meeting. Uh, Again, it might be, on Zoom, Teams, what have you. Um, I've done both. I've been onboarded at home with no one sitting around me and I've also been onboarded in an office. So ask the name of the person you will be meeting virtually or in person. 
Make sure you have a contact number for them. Yes. And where are you going to be meeting them? Mm -hmm. Bring all your little bits and bobs that make you comfortable. But also, I think sometimes HR tends to ask you to bring your passport to, you know, so they can sort of fill in your details. And I think there's a P... Your P45. P45. P60. P60. All of those. All those. Because, yeah. Yeah. Nothing worse than having a list of things you've got to come back with it, the next day. Right, yeah. Get there early. I mean, sometimes being late can't be helped. Traffic, delays, yeah. what have you. But really try and um, be there 10 minutes before. This is all going to help you with your anxiety, your nerves, your presentation of yourself arriving for your first day. I'm sure there's some stories out there yeah. of first day dramas. Share them on the uh, on website yeah, or on LinkedIn know. page. Yeah. What happened to you? Come on, share it. We know there's some dramas out there. A lot has happened to me, by the way, on my first day. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. That's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. I think bringing a notepad, pens, highlighters, because... I think it's vital you take notes. I mean, I've done onboarding to some people before and I've like, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And it's like, don't you need to write this down? And it's like, oh no, I know what's going on. And then and like an hour later, it's like, I actually forgot. What, what do I need to do? So make yeah. sure you have a good impression or bring your notes, take notes. More information, write it down. It's better. And bring the bits and bobs that do make you comfortable in terms of your highlighters, your favorite pen, a spare pen, you know Pen runs out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All I, those little things. But I still like pencils. So Do I you? put things in pencils and then when yeah. it's completed, I write it in pen. I go from blue to red to say that's done, that's done. Highlight that because that's important. I do like little... A little pencil. Creative, yeah. I only went sharp. <laughs> no, you've got the one that you click in and then it'll... Oh, the fake like, pencil. Yeah, fake pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, well, adrenaline, coffee for me. Forget that. that I'm having the coffee. You are? I definitely am having the coffee. Okay. <laughs> it calms my nerves. It gets your nerves going. Oh, mine's opposite. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I start stuttering and I don't want to do that on the first oh, day. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Yep. Try and be calm. I mean, not everyone's uncalm, I would say. No. But it's the expectation you have on yourself that will make you feel either nervous or anxious. So be kind to yourself on day yeah. one. I, I get excited. It's like first day at school. You it know, is. it's like, oh, I want to meet new people, new environments. But at the same time, it can be daunting, but don't overthink it. So the expectations of what do you do on your first day? Well, it's going to be very basic. You're going to be shown around the building or the small office, large office, whatever the setting is. You're going to be taking notes. So we talked about being prepared for that. Introduced to other people, other colleagues, bosses. Uh, You're going to IT. hear a lot of names. Don't expect yourself to remember all of them, but you must remember the key, maybe the heads of. Yeah. And also the person you're going to be looking after. Oh my goodness. The full <laughs> name. There's nothing worse, is there, than having that. Hi, Mem Michael and sort of like, Roger. <laughs> oh, no, my name's not Michael. <laughs> Absolutely make notes of everything. You will forget some information and that's okay. You will have information overload. If you have like an online onboarding, remember it is a process. It's there to tick you off and show that you have read and understood certain policies and procedures. Fine. That doesn't mean you can't revisit them. Yeah. Um, you can go back in your own time, maybe when you get home, take it in in a different setting. Yeah. And just listen, observe, ask, and also ask questions. I ask loads of questions instead of asking no questions and thinking, well, I'm too nervous to ask the question. Then you're never going to know. So I always ask questions. Absolutely. And ask for a buddy. You should be assigned a buddy. But if, you should be. Yeah. But ask if somebody could help me. If you haven't been assigned a work buddy, ask if you can be. That really has helped me in the past. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a fellow administrative assistant. I mean, it's really handy if they are because they totally get it. Yeah. But in some organizations, you might be the only one. Yeah, yeah. But you still need that regular point of contact. Everything's a learning process. Yeah. Everything. Give yourself time. But hopefully that initial research that you've done at interview stage on the company will start to allow the penny to drop on yeah. what the company does, what they deliver, what their output is, how many staff oh, they have yeah, across, yeah. you know, where yeah. their offices are located. Yeah. So everything will start to fall in place on day one. But you may not hit the ground running. 
<laughs> I hate that saying. We want you hitting the ground running, but you know, we talk about you have to learn all the processes. And as I said in the previous episode, that for the first three months, you'll be able to understand the processes. And then after six months, you're becoming a guru. So hang in there. Uh, you can't learn it all on the same day. You can't, no. Uh, and it's an unrealistic expectation to hit the ground running effectively. Yeah. And you haven't got a computer yet. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Although I have had some hit the ground running tasks set on me within the first few days of a really? new role. Oh, wow. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but I've prioritized them. My previous knowledge and contacts have kicked in immediately. I've been able to pause the onboarding and say, okay, no worries. I've got this. I will organize what you've asked me to organize. Yeah. No problem. Leave it with me. And then think, oh, right. One thing at a time. This is a priority. I'm in the middle of my onboarding. Not ideal. No. But I'm going to get this done. Yeah. Because this is a transferable skill that I've been perfecting for years. And this is another thing. Yeah. Why I'm good at my job is that I've been doing it for so long. I've been perfecting the role and the task that I do to make things look so easy. Yeah. It's like, a, what is it? A swan, all graceful <laughs> on top and underneath the legs are going. You know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Back Flapping. <your> arm. <laughs> but you're looking calm and collective. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wafting around on the surface and <laughs> flapping underneath. <laughs> we get it done though. Yeah, we do get it done. These things happen. Yeah. So have you got any first day dramas? What happened on your first day? Come on, tell us craigandjody.com or connect with us on LinkedIn. So we have a listener question. Cyan has sent in a really great question. We have an executive assistant who deals with onboarding daily to help answer this one with some really great tips. Hi, Crody. I'm starting a new job soon. I'm not entry level and I've actually been an executive assistant for the past eight years. I'm still so nervous about starting something new and also being the new girl. So do you have any tips to make a great impression in the early days of starting? Okay, next we're going to hear from a well-seasoned executive assistant at Corn Ferry who actually deals with onboarding PAs and EAs within the business on a regular basis. And she's going to share with us her top tips on how to have a successful transition into your new business. Hi, Crody. Erica Picton from Corn Ferry here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity today to talk about what does an EA do on their first day. When I joined my new job, I joined during the pandemic, which I found quite frightening. But the kind of person that I am, it was okay for me because I reached out to quite a few people. My tips for you are to give yourself as much time before you start to read as much info as you can on the company. For example, to find out what systems they use and to brush up if need be, if you feel you're a little bit rusty on some of your skills. My second point today would be greet everyone the same as you would, because you never know who you are talking to. And some companies clearly get feedback from the people that you would come into day-to-day -day contact with. Just a little pointer there. My third point is to network. It's all about the networking. Getting to know your key contacts in depth because they can help you, for example, if you need to speak to people in other departments or to liaise with them, they can do the introductions so that you don't kind of feel a little bit out of it. And my fourth point today would be, please be your authentic self. You've got the job, so now you need to prove why you're there. Everybody has different personalities, we all do. And it's all about gelling and making those contacts. Hopefully those points that I've given you today are okay. But please, enjoy yourselves and well done on getting your job. All the best, Erica. The Crody Files is brought to you by Autograph Events. 
Autograph Events are the experts in providing a complete event management solution. What do they offer? Free global venue finding through to full on-site event management, executive away days, retreats, team building and off-site meetings. Great. How will they help administrative assistants? They offer that extra pair of hands, a bit like the assistant's assistant. They understand how we like to work, which is the best part. So next time you have any event to arrange, big or small, email events at autograph-events.co.uk quoting Crody Files 2023 for a brochure and to find out how they can help you. Plus, they have a very special personal reward for all of our listeners. Next, we have a listener question on burnout. And to answer this question, we are absolutely blown away to introduce to you our next guest contributor, Laura Smith, a female transformation coach whose Take Back Control program group and one-to-one coaching has had global success. Laura is perfectly positioned and incredibly insightful to answer this question for us. Hi, Crody. Do you have any advice for dealing with burnout, especially after having a not-so-great performance review? I love my job, but I need a top tip to get me out of this hole. Hi, Crody. I would love to help you answer this question sent in by one of your listeners. My name is Laura Smith, and I'm an energy and well-being coach. So I help professionals have more energy and master their eating habits, stress levels, and well-being. So you can contact me via craigandjody.com and find my contact details on there. So this listener wants some advice for dealing with burnout after a performance review that didn't go so great and top tips to get out of a hole. Now, this doesn't sound like burnout at all. It sounds like after the performance review that didn't go to plan, a bit of a knock in confidence and the ego and also just low energy from that as well. Um, So top tips to raise your energy is go do something away from work and make you happy. So have a laugh with some friends or family go to the cinema, um, something different that's going to help you recharge and refresh mentally. In terms of physically, exercise. So go for a walk, go for a swim, go to the gym, get some good nutrition in you as well. We don't want to see any self-sabotage. This is what a lot of people do to make themselves feel better is self-sabotage through alcohol, through um, snacking, through takeaways. We don't want that at the moment. If you're not feeling great, You want to do everything you possibly can to make yourself feel even better. So the exercise nutrition is absolute key and good sleep as well. Um, In terms of the performance review, so yeah, it didn't go how you expected, but we have to kind of accept that we can take constructive criticism and there is always room for improvement. And even though it was uncomfortable and we didn't really like it, it's like, what was your biggest takeover from it and what was the lesson? Because when you look past that, and find the take home and the lessons, you can set a plan, set a new goal and take some action so you can improve for your next performance review and just ask the question, what what do I need to do to have an even better review next time? Um, and lastly, bit of mindset work here, write down your wins and your skills. So what are you good at? You know, what's your strengths? What are your wins of the last six months? We're six months into this year. So write down everything that's gone well at this first part of the year and it's just going to turn your mindset, turn your focus, and raise your energy again to feel so much better. Companies tend to have an intranet, which uh, is an internal internet for the company that doesn't access the World Wide Web. So they might have a lot of training sort of facilities on there. So even though you are working from home or, you know, you got the weekend to yourself. I always jumped onto that intranet uh, on a Sunday afternoon just to familiarize myself. That's then, very good of you, Craig. Well, it's only because when I get to work, I don't have to do it because I'm now going to still be working and I've got to do this and do that. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't had a chance to actually see how to do it. So I do that just one or two hours. And it doesn't have to be every Sunday. It's just at the beginning, just so you can get on top of it. Intranets are great. 
it's usually the go-to place where all your company's information is stored, everything the employee needs to know, all of those usual typical questions and contacts are yes. usually stored on an and intranet. And pictures and photos of the people you yeah, really org charts. Yeah. Um, platform links, quick links. I love yep. a quick link on an intranet. <laughs> so, yeah, companies do have this um, word called intranet. I'm only just saying it basically because if you're starting out in the role, it's good to know that it differs from the internet. It's an internal internet called the intranet. So get to know that. As your role progresses, you will almost be expected to be the master of the intranet, right? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Right. And know where those quick links are. Yeah, to guide other people. You can put them people. on your uh, bookmark them on your Google Love doing that. or the whatever. bookmark the most important pages on the internet. Yeah, the quick link sites. Yeah, love that. So use this to familiarise yourself with the people, the different office locations, and maybe you've got an internal training academy where you can access training courses yeah. that you might want to, you know, indulge better yourself, in. Yeah, better yourself. Never stop learning. So what about our Sort of uh, recaps on what we can tell. Top tips and tricks, tricks. of this yeah. episode. What would you say that is your main takeaway that you would love the listeners to um, take away also? Why not try this easy mind exercise? While you are being shown around the office and you're introduced to co-workers, in those first three seconds when they say their name, instead of thinking, what a lovely dress, or oh, that tie would go great with my new suit, Spell out that person's name in your mind, then repeat their name out loud when you're shaking their hand. Something like, was that Rachel Mead, R-A-C-H-A-E-L-M-E-A-D? By doing this, you're creating an anchor memory and you're storing it in your brain and you're sort of visualizing, you're hearing it and you're saying it. So you're using a lot of your sensory perceptions to actually remember that name. But make sure that you write down a note of that person's name. And this is where you can add a note, great tie, lovely address. You know, she had blonde hair. Um, she works for HR. So this is a good sort of trick to try and remember people's name because it always gives a great impression when you remember that person's name and they can't remember yours. I would always carry a notepad, notepad, pen, write down everything and ask questions, write it down. Because I think that's my top tip. If I go home and I've got my notebook at work, I sort of like, oh, I'm lost. I haven't got my notebook. I haven't mm, got you know, all my that's a good sort one. Of back page with all my little tips on. My top tip would be be kind to yourself. Allow yeah. yourself that time. It is your onboarding time. But also be prepared in the back of your mind for those quick, can you just questions. <laughs> a quick one. <laughs> just a quick one before you go. Love that, don't you? I How do. many of those have you heard in your <laughs> career? Just before you go, can you just, yeah. Let that reactive nature kick in at any point of your onboarding. Don't get upset if, you know, you're doing your onboarding. Be reactive. Be proactive in your own time or at the end of the day, checking up on the intranet. And most importantly, preparation again. Prepare, be comfortable, and just give yourself time to learn. I agree. Right, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for listening. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Give us five-star review even if it's just one word, that would be really helpful for us to stay visible to you. Our next episode is going to cover what to ask when working with an executive. We would love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe so you won't miss an episode. And why not share your thoughts with us on our LinkedIn page, The Crody Files, or visit craigandjody.com. I'm Craig Bryson. And I'm Jody Mears. And, and together, together we, we are, are The, the Crody, Crody Files. Files. This episode was brought to you by Autograph Events, our sponsor.